Live from the Mandalay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Insight 2014. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone, live here in Las Vegas for IBM Insight. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, and we're here with industry analyst, principal analyst, and chairman of the Constellation with Ray Wang, CUBE alumni, always on to uh, break it down. Ray, great to see you again, uh, back here in, the, uh, in, in your wheelhouse, IBM. We are back in Mandalay Bay. I think this is my ninth year here, I think. You guys probably probably more on your end, I don't know. It's a fun show. So I got to ask you, you know, we, we saw each other at Oracle Open World, I mean, I mean, this is the year of software, and Dave and I were talking about- In four. On, in four, I mean, this is all happening. So we were talking on the intro, I want to get your take on this. The software is where the margins are, right? And cloud is where the leverage is. So you're seeing that shift happening and inflection point kind of at the same time. Um, what has to happen for the big guys like the IBMs, like the HPs, where they're misunderstood right now in the marketplace, from Wall Street to customers, and certainly customers are getting the prospects, but Wall Street's certainly not getting it. They don't have to carry boxes. Software's at the center of the value proposition. What are people missing in the IBM story? What's your take on that? And what, what is IBM getting right and what do they need to work on? Oh, I think what's interesting here, I mean, this is the future of where IBM is going to be. And, and what I like about this is the fact that you can watch them go through these transitions. Every 20 years, IBM goes through a transition. Right? You guys have seen it, they're shedding off hardware now, doubling down on software, moving heavily into Watts and other related services. You see the IBM and Apple deal going on. That's the future of what's happening. So this is all happening while they've got to shed the older businesses and build new businesses at the same time. The street never gets that. The street's always confused. They want things that are sure, they want earnings that make sense. That doesn't make sense in this world. They're following the shift that's about to happen. Software's hot, especially given what's happened with cloud, but if you compare West Coast versus East Coast companies, that's a big shift. West Coast companies are designed to completely run the model, completely go against total, total addressable market, try to drive profits. So grow profits, grow revenue, but not necessarily run a profitable business which is a very interesting thing. On the East Coast, you try <laughs> to run Service now is pretty profitable. I mean, you've got some of these, the cloud companies, Tableau, you've got Splunk, I mean, this new land. Actually, expand. they're not profitable. None of them are no, profitable. No, because they're pouring, they're pouring their oh. profits into building out okay. CapEx for I, the... I'm staying correct. Right? No, you know what I'm saying? No, no, they no, could be profitable. They could be profitable. But they're growing. They're, they're Frank Slubin says, we could be highly profitable, but we choose to put it into growth. Everyone says that, from <laughs> Amazon all the way down to, you know, Salesforce. Work, workday. And Workday. Yep. It's like, we're going to just keep piling in. And, and that's the issue, right? You've got IBM, which is running profitable business, you got Microsoft running a profitable business, and they're being hammered by the street, right, for running a profitable business, which baffles everybody else's minds in the real world. And when we go back and say, oh, but they're not growing fast enough. Well, you know, they could just run an unprofitable business, right? So that's the shift that's actually happening. Okay, so I want to get you, I want to go down the list here, because we have limited time with you, so I want to try to get, extract as much value and content for the audience. One, evaluate IBM's leadership. Are they in position? I mean, it's, it's the classic leadership, go to market, innovation engine, technology leadership, and confidence in a value proposition. Those are the kinds of the key things we've been looking at. So let's go, let's go, let's go down the list, leadership. Leadership, um, they've got lots of folks that are in place. Massive experience from Steve Mills down. Uh, if you're looking at on this end, if you're thinking about what's going on with Watson, you got Mike Roden on the other end. These folks are seasoned players. They know the game. Steve is one of those folks that are probably one of three or four master chessmen in the enterprise software business. Larry Allison being on the other end, they know the game, they see exactly how it's being played. And you got new players, you got in he's awesome, they're kicking ass and taking names. A lot you of got... young leadership, new talent along the way. How about Ginny, what's your assessment? I think Ginny was dealt the bad card, I think she's making the best of what it is, and I think that's really important. Right, I mean. Bad card being what, over-reliance on services? Over-reliance on older business on model? EPS, older business model. I think what she has now is opportunities to create more IBM Apple-like partnerships. Right, there's a lot going on. We surveyed 100 companies, and we said, what are you building next? Who are you buying from? What's happening? None of them said we're buying from a legacy vendor. They all said, we are partnering, we're co-innovating, we're co-creating, we need to build something that doesn't exist. We're at that point, like where we were just yeah. at the beginning of SOA. And we're seeing some IBM movements, rumors going on, there's a big announcement coming out on Wednesday, but, I, but I don't, we don't really have any information to report at this time, but we think it's going to be a big, big move. I'm sure you might know under <laughs> I NDA. I don't know anything. Um, but let's talk about the innovation engine. Every company that's doing a turnaround and or an inflection point needs an innovation engine. What is IBM's innovation engine? The innovation here is really building stuff against analytics, taking that service business, and the multidisciplinary pieces they have on industries. 
What about the technology leadership? Where are they strong, where do they need to work on their game? I think they have a strong R&D base. Look at design, look at what they have in the labs. I think those are all key assets. The challenge is, how do they align themselves to work together? Now, you started seeing that when they moved to the Smarter Planet messaging. Things started shedding. Different groups started falling apart. Brands that were acquired suddenly had you know, one type of mission. I think they've got to take that to the next level as we get to what's next, right? Is it cognitive computing? Probably. Is it moving to a next set of services that actually work in partnership with customers more deeply? Right. Maybe. Is it deeper into industries? Is it whatever the big announcement is on Wednesday? Maybe. Yeah, I think what, I'd be in. What about the Apple deal? So you referenced that before. Uh, obviously it makes a lot of sense for Apple. Uh, what, what's, it, what's it mean for IBM? Is it getting hot products into the enterprise? Filling up the bag with hot products? Well, we heard some interesting stats this morning, right? Uh, you know, 90%, was like 99% of all Fortune 500s have iOS running, right? Two times market share in the enterprise versus consumer. I think those are very interesting trends. If you talk to Apple, they're deep in the enterprise, but they've had challenges figuring out how to service the enterprise. It's not like you buy a Dell box and the guy shows up and helps you, you know, with it, services, it comes every week, picks it up, you know, does the swap outs. There's nothing like that. You go to the Apple store, it's a genius bar, and you're like, oh, okay, I'm waiting in line, maybe a VIP treatment somewhere. Um, having that level, that's only one of it. I think what's interesting is the stuff being built on Swift, the applications that are showing up around analytics and mobility in the enterprise that IBM's co-building with Apple. You're, you're seeing a lot of that in cloud, OpenStack, a lot of consolidation. The big boys are moving in there. You see Cloud Foundry, Bluemix, and with the software stuff coming together. So that's interesting for IBM. So I want to get your take on something outside of IBM. If you look at the players, you've been doing the world win, you're doing a ton of survey work with customers. You got a lot of research out there in their space. What's the consistent theme across the landscape of all the, of the companies in this business. Is it consolidation? Is it growth? You've mentioned reinvestment for ServiceNow and there's other guys putting more money in. What's the big mega trend that you're seeing, that common thread amongst all the different companies? I think the mega trend is what they're trying to do is keep themselves from becoming an old line industry. Think about the shift to hardware and what happened to the hardware vendors. Uh, massive consolidation, very little innovation, then they had to do a lot of acquisitions to keep the innovation pipe. They bought product to be in pipe, and then they tried to build the revenue based on acquisitions and then that all fall apart, and then you know, the, the, the workforce shifted, right? All the good people left, and they're, in, they're completely hollowed out. That's almost every hardware vendor, and the ones that are left are still facing that challenge, right? Pharma went through the same thing with pharmaceuticals, right? Pharma folks, yeah. great new blockbuster drugs, oh wait, patent protection, oh wait, everyone good left and formed the biotech company. Software's in that same mix right now. Every company's facing the same thing. Do we invest more in R&D and get innovation? Do we acquire that innovation? Do we acquire the pipeline of IP? Do we acquire a pipeline of revenue? We're at this little inflection point where systems of transaction are moving towards systems of engagement. People don't know how to build architect against that. And we're also moving towards this digital age, which is shifting exactly what happens between yeah. the consumer and the enterprise. So and, that's seeing... and that's chaos right now. You would consider that totally pretty chaos. chaos. No, so are we, are, are we going to see a renaissance in software companies, guys like you know, Workday, Salesforce, it's, uh, others? Or are we going to see more consolidation there and somebody emerge from this systems of, of, of engagement? We're definitely going to see a consolidation. What we're seeing is app dev is hot, right? Look at DevOps. You guys have been covering this area. This is pretty yeah. extremely hot. People are building the next generation of software in-house right now. And the stuff that's actually going to go out package is going to come from tools vendors. The tools vendors have to figure out how to get this to package mainstream. And the packaged apps vendors in the cloud have to figure out how to bring this out. So it's interesting what you were saying about, you talked to, I think you said 100 of your, your clients, and you said they're building something that doesn't exist. What are they building that on? What does that stack look like? What's the modern stack? You know, they're building on anything they can, right? <laughs> Whether it's the core that they have, abstracting the layer out and creating new verbs, right? Create, read, update, delete. Oh, that's old school. Right? How do we abstract, share, publish, take that information, mix it, bring out insights, serve it up to well, someone else? Well the speed else. came up, right? So Dave, I think what we're seeing and what Ray's hitting on to your question is speed. Well, whoever can deliver the speed and that, that land and expand formula of I got to deliver value fast, they'll, they'll take whatever tooling they could use. It's not just speed too, it's a question of how do you bring all these different types of data together. You're seeing right now, maybe it's happening in visualization, but it's more than that. I've got to mix and match different sets of data sets so that I can get to context. And back to the context conversation, right? Back by role, relationship, process, thinking about time, location, sentiment, even predicting intent. Once I get there, now I can do something with it. That's context computing in IBM's world. Um, which makes a lot of sense today, so I got spinning off that cognitive <laughs> fantasy, and it's certainly good messaging. <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on, I mean, IBM's good, uh, good job on the, on the messaging with cognitive, but I, is it real? Are you seeing any reality there? I am, actually. We spend a lot of time with the Watson team, um, looking at not just the launch at 51 Astor Place, but what was interesting about it was the fact that people are building new business models. 
Right, that's the interesting thing. So you're thing. seeing specific deliverable solutions on Watson that Terry are Terry Jones, the guy that founded Kayak, is like thinking about how do you plan travel, right? Have you seen the Watson cookbook? Yes, I did. That, that was, was pretty awesome, right? There's yeah. things in there like what was it? I didn't see it. weird you, flavor yeah. combinations that they've Oh yes, out. I did see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah, like yeah, really? Yeah. Would you put the Watson why, Chef? Why is that right. in there, right? <laughs> so Watson Chef is like example of one of that. Um, you're also seeing that with the medical research, right? They're ingesting huge corpuses of data, trying to find patterns. We were upstairs in the innovation lab earlier. Uh, it was kind of some cool stuff, right? Uh, imagine you're doing a debate and you're trying, you're doing a legal argument ingest all these data, all these journals, all this information, and they're creating pros and cons, right? Literally sorting based on sentiment. Here's a pro debate, here's a con debate. Start looking at them and build out your complete argument. So what's the, what's the hold up with Watson? Why are we waiting? I mean, I was just talking to the guys last night, got a great demo, I'm like, I want that right now for CrowdChat and for our Wikibon and SiliconANGLE. They're like, we'll stand in line. I go, I want to cut the line. I'm like, yeah, right. So that How much money you got? <laughs> no, but this comes down, are they, are they, co deal? Are they stalling the <laughs> nuclear weapon that they got the, you know, behind just waiting for it to release or is it more of a go-to-market initiative where they really want to let the use cases develop? I think for nine months of putting this go to market, it's been pretty fast. Yeah, so, right? so it's a comprehensive, it's a big project. It's been fast, but I think what it was was finding the right set of partners. Right? When you're going to launch something like this, you've got to make sure the industries are yeah. right, the partners are right, they're committed. So I think that's taken a little bit more time. Plus, I think they've learned a lot about Watson. It's gone from that big ass box to you know, yeah. really, really, really they're, small. They're thing. operationalizing the product for mainstream. That's a hard task. It's not easy. Okay, so I got to ask about engagement. Obviously, you know, you're the leading analyst in, in engagement, social engagement, social data, but also has that uh, engagement systems of record, engagement records, it's more of a data warehouse. How is the word engagement changing and, and how is that affecting the social business aspect? I think what we're starting to understand is that engagement and social is really different than systems of transaction. Right, these were the new verbs I'm talking about. You're taking the data, you're mixing it, you're interacting it, it's built into business process. People are creating new verbs, right? And we're abstracting the transactional record and we're doing something else with it. I mean, take CrowdChat, that's a great example, right? <laughs> taking that data, pulling it, <laughs> tying it back, and then what do we do with it? You take additional sets of action against that, right? If you take what's happening inside any social business system, you're collaborating, right? I watch my 10 year old, it's hilarious. They're on Google Docs at 6 p.m., they're on Google Docs and they can finish an article by 6.45. Six kids get on Google Docs at the same time, and they go at it. I mean, they just go at it. That's great, That's yeah. crazy, by 6.45, they're done. You look at it, they cut each other off, they wrote something, they changed the structure, they capitalized it, they formatted it, and then they're done. We don't work like that. We've never lived in a way. We sit back and we build out our arguments, we put it in an outline, then we go to a meeting, and you know what's the first thing we do? We defend the crap out of it. <laughs> like, that's my idea, I'm, not, I'm gonna win. Yeah, how dare you, no, how no, dare you go no, after it? Don't change that sentence. <laughs> right, so something's happening. The collaboration is key, I mean, that's, so, that's the social fabric of the internet of things where people are things. Um, so what do you see, be critical of IBM now, identify the areas you need to work on. What do you think that they need to sharpen the, the, the pencil on and, and again, get the business faster on? What, what do you think they need to work on? Well, I think a lot of it is they've got to figure out which are going to be their future clients. Like, who are the folks going to take them forward? Right, so who are the star accounts, the lead accounts that are going to say, let's go co-innovate and co-create. And when they do that, you're going to see a long tail happen, right? So if they went out and said, this is not true, and so I don't know if it's true or not, but let's say they took a company like Tesla and decided to co-innovate and co-create with them, or Emirates and said, let's go co-innovate and co-create something. These are brand leaders, right? And when they move, everybody else moves with them. And so it's finding that niche of customers that want to do the co-innovation, co-creation with IBM, and understanding that it's not the same IBM that's in the back end. They're willing to go out and partner in ways they've never done before. And we see that with some of our clients. What are the, what's the coolest thing that you've seen in the past couple of weeks, obviously through the events? I mean, you've seen all the demos, you've seen all the, the sizzling, the sizzle of the steak, and all of the, the demos, talking to customers. Where's the reality? Where's the rubber hitting the road from the vendor standpoint and the customers? And what are the, what's the coolest thing you've seen? Well, let's take the customer point of view. I think the coolest thing is that old line businesses are transforming themselves to become digital businesses, right? You see that with the Philips. You saw it with the Pratt & Whitney this morning. Mm -hmm. What I loved about Pratt & Whitney, like what you don't see on the back end is like, where's all that data, right? Where's all that data coming? And I think I heard, and I'm not sure if this is NDA or not, but I'll say it this way, that if you can predict 18 months of data, even though they have 24 months of data, and you can predict the next six months of that data, that's pretty darn cool. Fill in those blanks. So what about, there's, <laughs> what about, we were talking about the stacks before, what about those stacks within, whether it's manufacturing, or automotive, or retail, finance, insurance, 
those have to break down for those old line companies to transform themselves. And there's going to be a spectrum, right? Some are going to do it, some aren't. What are you seeing in your client base? Well, the top three companies in every industry command anywhere from 40 to 70% market share. So it's a winner take all market right now. Yeah. And the companies that aren't moving fast enough realize either they don't move or they're going to get merged and acquired. We have a stat that looks at 52% of the Fortune 500 have been merged, acquired, gone bankrupt, or fallen off the list since 2000. American Enterprise Institute has a number that says 88% of the Fortune 500 have turned since inception. Most of that happened post 2000. Right, and it's because new business models are emerging. Yeah, YouTube wasn't even around then, YouTube came into the scene. You look at all the historic change, it's really been the fastest. Uber, Amazon, oh. I mean everything. Like the one, like an iPhone pretty much literally obliterated, do you need a flashlight? Do you need a compass? Do you really need a watch? Yeah, I'm going to buy another one from Apple, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's that kind of stuff that's going on. So one of the things that we're teasing out, every CUBE event, Dave and I try to pick a concept and play with it and ask our guests kind of what they think of it. And one of the things that's coming out of this one being big data is the whole storytelling meme. We've been there, it's not this new concept, but like we're looking at the upward reporting to executives and executives want real-time dashboards. They don't want another dashboard. They want, they want storytelling. So Dave and I have been riffing on this concept around, it's basically the content business internally. So, you know, the executives from p and we had a P&G guy on earlier who was a veteran there in data analytics saying, hey, they all want the same reports. Oh, yeah. they, and so they have to content up, market up to the executives. So you're seeing this connection between user content and sharing and what we do for a business, which is develop content and share with audiences. So that's bringing a whole nother level of engagement. So I want to get your thoughts on that about this long tail distribution of, of engagement. As people start looking at the different audiences, how do you look for the data points within the audiences to know where to look and explore? Um, and you know, 10 years ago, they would throw out those data points. They would, and what's actually interesting is the cost of data, right, and the cost of storage, right? Massive amounts of data production, dropping cost of storage. What does that mean? I've got to mine all this data really quickly, right? And so this is the context piece that becomes important. I've got to build probabilistic data models. Right, and probabilistic data models to figure out what's going on, probabilistic business processes, so it becomes choose your own adventure-like processes. You might start in point A and end up in point B. You might start in point C and end up in point D. I might start in point D and end up in point A. I've got to be able to support that kind of interaction because these aren't like force fit business processes from the world of systems of transaction. Something's changed and, and I think that's what we have to start with. Uh, the other piece that you're talking about around the storytelling, what's really interesting is it is bottom up and top down. If you look at what's going on in board reporting, the way they get the numbers, the things that people are getting an iPad now with the whole story of what's happening, they're swiping, they're drilling in to figure out what happened in the quarter, they're getting to that level of detail. That's the stuff we've been dreaming about for a while. And what's exciting about that is it's happening right now. Yeah, and then the, this on the presentation this morning, they talked about engagement with the crowd and going to live events, and so, you know, this is the web scale era coming back in. It's the Yahoo's, it's the Google's, it's the, the classic long tail, so the analytics is not just one area, it's a whole spectrum of data, and that's, I think, one of the things we're seeing that's interesting on this show is, is that people are looking outside the box, if you will, from the normal suspects into these random skew data points to explore. But what's fun about the shows, right, it's the data viz actually had analytics behind it, <laughs> right? That's actually very different than just pure data viz. Mm -hmm. When you go to a data viz show, it's like, there's reporting, here's where it is, yeah. I can manipulate the data. But when you have the analytics behind it, you can then do what? Suggest the next set of best actions. And that surfacing of patterns, testing out hypotheses, getting those insights in place, that's what makes it fun. Yeah, that's the holy grail. That's what everyone talks about. Better outcomes, better decision making. We were at uh, Hadoop World last week. It's just interesting to juxtapose sort of the, the discourse there with the discourse here, right? Everything <laughs> sparked and, and Hadoop, obviously, yep. and Yarn, and, and all kinds of new innovations going on there. And here it's, listen, uh, big data transcends Hadoop. So we had Goldmacher on our panel, it was interesting. Um, and you know, he was very outspoken when he was an analyst at Cowan about the Oracles and the yep. SAPs and, and how they're screwed. And I think he, he moderated that a little bit and basically has more of a, oh, you know, darn, the rich keep getting richer <laughs> scenario, right? <laughs> But having said that. But he also talked about the East Coast, West Coast dynamic too. He did. Well, that's a separate conversation, <laughs> the flyover. I'll tell you about that in a second. But essentially, what, what, I wanted to, what I wanted to ask you is you're seeing so much money raised, huge valuations. You know, will we see a billion dollar company emerged out of those new players, or will guys like Oracle and IBM just gobble them up and just kind of maintain their largesse? I want to know which startup actually has the balls 
actually has the balls to actually ride it out the long way. Because I don't see that right now in a lot of the startups. Right? But if one of them does and decides to build the new stack, they'll make it. Now there are companies that I, I see like like. What do you yeah. mean by that ride it out, have the balls to ride it out? You mean not like, sell out. Not right? sell out, they want to win, they want to dominate, they want to take out the big guys. A company like Atlassian is on that list for mm. me. Mm. I, mean, I see it, you can see that they've got the fire, they're interested, they want to win. Well, right. that, that's the, very, very So what's fun. the makeup of, the, of that profile? If you had to identify that startup, that is what, founders are in place, they've making money, so it's not about just a quick flip, they have a sustainable value proposition, anything else? Massive that? developer community ecosystem, um, a leader that is not afraid of the market, what we call traditionally a class like a nerd, uh, I don't know what's legal on this TV, nerd a-hole. They typically are smart enough, but they don't care about arrogant it. Arrogant enough arrogant to Arrogant enough to go yeah. call it on their own. They want to win. I mean, that's different. We haven't seen a lot of those since Oracle, Google. since you know, Google, Bezos. since Bezos, since. Right. I mean, that was like 10, 15 years ago, yeah. Yeah. right? I mean, the, the last, I mean, maybe, let, let's give it to Facebook. Yeah, right? well, Facebook, yeah, right. Facebook is sold definitely, out. no, he didn't sell out. No, he could have. He could have sold out. He didn't. He, he didn't chose not to. Run that thing. Right. That, that so is that going to come out of Cloudera, Hortonworks? I don't know, maybe. Mapbar? Well, certainly Cloudera yeah. postpones the IPO discussion with the Intel relationship. That gives Do they a lot. have the balls, as Ray said? Well, I think they do. I mean, I talk to the founders all the time, and Cloudera <laughs> wants to go the long, play the long game. How much is that is just them just flexing their, their narrative, and how much is Intel driving it? And we'll see. I'm waiting to get heckled on University Avenue in about two days. <laughs> 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 this is going to be brutal. <laughs> no, I think the startups, that's a good, I mean, this is a big thing in Silicon Valley, is this durable company conversation. Who's building a durable company? And it's a legitimate concern. I don't know, maybe Workday. Workday's going to go out right, for a long time. Yeah, they're, I, mean, they're I don't think they want to sell. I don't I mean, think they want to I think companies sell. that are no, already public Dave, are, Dave has no interest in selling Dave out. No I mean, he didn't want to sell people soft. That's a great so. example. Right. Workday is one. Will Salesforce sell out? Splunk is another one. Tableau, ServiceNow, all Will public. Salesforce sell out? Well, Salesforce no way, is a really no interesting example. I don't think Benioff could be the next out. one, right? That could be the next Salesforce one. Salesforce could be the next one, unless, unless Mark ends up taking over Oracle. I mean, you, After I mean you, gotta, you gotta look at Salesforce. <laughs> they're playing a win. I mean, the way they're running their business right now. They're playing a win. Right they're playing now. a they're win. Playing There's no win. doubt about that. It's clear that. Well, Salesforce has a platform that's broad they've enough, never sell. I'm not sure Workday does. I so mean, we I started know. with the big data companies. I don't see it in the big data companies, but I do see it in some of the older cloud companies. Cloud's well, here's the thing about the, yeah. think about that. Well, right. like OpenStack and, and big data are interesting verticals. OpenStack is more kind of anemic yeah. right now, but big data's got a lot of juice in it because it's dollars there. And, and so it's still early. So Who's going to rise out of that crowd from a startup standpoint? We just haven't seen it, and the big boys are coming in. So if you don't have the stack, you're either playing on top or around the stack. Do you agree with that? And can a startup establish a stack in this competitive environment? Um, no, but they could orchestrate a roll up of stack companies to actually get there if they've got the balls. And That's I, creativity. I, I think that they can do it. Uh, I think okay. there's a lot of parts all lying around there that are actually can be assembled to create that brand new stack. And what was interesting for me is I walked out of the Software AG conference, right? And they're probably talking about a digital business stack. They've got three out of the eight pieces that you need, which is interesting. I think the creativity of the entrepreneurs out there, uh, you never underestimate to me, I think, Entrepreneurs see things that others don't. Dave and I talk about this all the time, you know, I mean, uh, we, but we just need to get some of the killer instinct, and I think it's going to come from a young, the young gun's going to have to come up and just take, just take the mantle away, have blind ambition. God, man, I feel like the yeah. old man in the room again. <laughs> yeah, <it's> <laughs> how many cycles have you lived through? Uh, <laughs> Hold on, how many not. lines on your scar tissue <laughs> you have? Um, you've seen it all, so let's just talk about that. So given your experience and uh, in age, our age, What's your take on what's going to happen? How far will this cycle go? You know, bubble conversation comes up every week, certainly in Silicon Valley. Um, the financial results of the past couple of weeks have been kind of interesting on the stock market side, but the private markets are still booming. You got companies worth billions of dollars on the private market. Is that bubble going to pop? Is there sustainability on the revenue side? I don't know, we have some interesting conversations with VCs over the last uh, two months. Um, some of the VC firms may not make it in the next round. They're having trouble raising their next round. The established folks, let's say the top 12 VC firms, they're doing well, right? Money's still flowing in, they're raising the funds. So we're seeing a thinning out on the VC side, which means we may see a thin out on the How many of those side. survivors are not on the, on the West Coast? I think the West Coast is going through some VC. Maybe some in New York. VC consolidation. Some in New York. I'm getting a sense from the VCs yeah. in California that it's California. the investment climate right? is dropping like a, like a rock. It's California. The East Coast VCs have a rock solid plan 
to actually get to profitability. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a it's, different game. Yeah, you get a lot of flyers. Still, the consumer just, bubbles yeah. definitely, the bloom is off the consumer rose. Yeah, but outside I, of media in New York, well I guess New York. No, we're getting integrated outside. devices. It's the device market that's hot. I'm seeing a lot of investment, IOT sensors, yep. devices, yeah. embedded software, that's hot. Again, California again. though is going to own that, yeah, no? Well, the smart money that I'm, I'm seeing in California is all born in the cloud. The smart, um, outside of the consumer of paid space. Born in the cloud, born big data, and now IOT. Well, no, they, no, this is the new stack. It has to be an integrated suite, and it has to be flexible enough for a freemium and or land and expand business model. They'll invest in that because a lot of leverage and risk reduction. And enough large vendors with an exit strategy for some of these startups. Look at a GE software. There's some, some cool stuff going there. Look at what Cisco might have on the back end. Look what Intel's doing. They're building funds to absorb those when they come out. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's a great opportunity. If I'm a startup right now in the enterprise, the enterprise is hot, but it's, it's really hard to do an enterprise startup. <laughs> you can't just come out of school and say, hey, I'm going to go compete with IBM. It'd be great yeah. if my socks talked to my <laughs> toothbrush. Let's go build a startup. <laughs> what? Legacy data? I don't deal with that. Privacy? Do I care about that? What's going on? Security. Right. What's your take quick on security to wrap up the segment? Oh, I think this is going to be the biggest issue, getting security right. You already see some of the issues that companies that are in the payments business face. You see what's happening with data. Trying to secure data at the right level is going to be important. Um, this is going to continue to be a problem as we go digital because our identity is at risk and our data and our company's IP. All right, and final. it's going outside the four walls. I mean, that's, you know. So final, final comment, Ray. Walls. Comment on, on IBM's health status for the investors out there and for folks who want to get inside the head. Bumper sticker IBM. Good, bad, ugly. Give us the quick summary in the segment. I think the way to look at IBM is over the next 18 to 24 months, they're going to need some breathing room. There's going to be a lot more investment in some of the new areas as they're trying to figure out what that right mix of investment is and revenue. I think people are going to look at IBM and say, hey look, do they have a long-term strategy? Problem is, most of the investors today are quarter to quarter. Um, if you want to go long and think about a place, I think IBM's still a good place to be. Okay, Ray Wang, uh, Principal Analyst at Constellation. He's also the Chairman, Founder of uh, Constellation Research. You got an event coming up, put a plug in for your event. All right, catch us next year since we're already sold out. But this year's yeah. event, October 29th to 31st at the Half Moon Bay Ritz, it's our innovation summit focused on digital disruption. Next year, November 4th through 6th, same place, Half Moon Bay. Well, big names, share some, some names. Who didn't show up, who should have been there, didn't get there. Lots and of folks are coming from David Pogue, who's out there, Rachel Botsman, resetting the sharing economy, talking about what collaborative economies are, bigger than a startup trend. Uh, we've got uh, Raj Chetty talking about the quality of opportunity from Harvard. John Hagel is speaking, he's talking about what What's coming next, um, and then I think with lots of interesting companies. So. Awesome, well congratulations, your firm's awesome, you got great research, your digital transformation thesis you have is really excellent, and again, enterprise, you got your rock solid. Ray Wang here inside theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>